Hey, thanks for joining us on Outdoors for a Change. We're back at the yurt, just Kathy and I, and we're going to have a great time. We have a great dinner cooking right yes, now. Yes, we do. The kids are at home. And in <laughs> fact, we invited the kids this time, and they didn't want to come, so it's still us. Uh, but we're going to have a great time. We're going to uh, cook some venison Salisbury steak in the Dutch oven over the fire. And in the meantime, I got a bunch of camping gear and outdoor gear we got to go over. I got a new tent. I get, Kathy's going to help me put up. She is the engineer in the family <laughs> because I'm going to start doing solo camps. I got a bunch of gear for that. So tune in on this episode. We're going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be all outdoors related. It's not going to be any fishing in this one. I think we still have some fun. We don't need fishing <laughs> poles to have fun, do we? No. We still have good food and we have good friends. Thanks for joining us. First venison, Salisbury steak, stroganoff. Mm. Hot? Mm, hot or good. I always say that. Uh, hot? Of course it's hot. You get the first bite. That looks really good. Let's, let me dig into dinner, then we'll get some uh, camping equipment out. Thanks.
Kathy, thanks for helping me put this tent up. <laughs> I am not spatially intelligent. Kathy is the one who helps put the tents up and figures the engineering out. She's the engineer of the family. I'd be lost without her. So I'm definitely going to have to put this up a couple times by myself out in the yard before I feel comfortable going solo camping with it. But it seems pretty simple. It, it, it's pretty simple. We're just used to like the 10 person tents that we normally buy that, that pop right up and all that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is, this thing's pretty small. And you would think a tiny one person tent would be cheap, but it's not. The smaller the tents get, the more expensive, the smaller tents get, the more expensive they get. This is going to be home sweet home on the solo camps. Not a lot of room. Oh. Plenty of room to spare. I'm a big guy too, so it's nice to know my feet aren't gonna be sticking out the window. Here's another new toy I have, uh, my new silky saw. I've been wanting one of these for a while. I finally splurged to get one. And uh, I'm looking forward to using it. Plenty sharp. My first silky saw, the Big Boy 2000 360. I don't know what any of that means, but uh, it cuts pretty good. I know a lot of people have trouble with these breaking and snapping on them because they're they're cutting both ways, they're back and forth like a regular saw, but it's only supposed to cut coming towards you as you pull it and uh, it'll keep it from binding up and snapping. But even then I, I kind of bent it a little bit because the wood slipped on me. So I'm gonna have to be careful with this. If this is my only way of cutting wood while I'm out solo camping for 10 days or even a couple weeks, I'm gonna be in trouble because I'm gonna need firewood. So I'm gonna need that thing to last. Now, Silky has a professional grade saw that's much thicker and it won't snap on you. So I'm gonna have to be careful. But I started with the, uh, the cheaper one i think it only cost me 50 60 dollars but if this one breaks on me it's 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 so light if this one breaks on me i'll just upgrade to the professional i think it's like 130 bucks but i'm a big boy now i have my silky big boy i'm looking forward to getting out and using it but uh yeah that's a that's a positive i'm glad to have it another tool for the solo camp coming up the smaller these tents get, the more expensive they get. We pay $150 for a 10 person tent, while this one person tent ran almost 400 bucks. But it lays less than five pounds. It has a place for me to put my backpack uh, to keep it dry right here. I like it, it's pretty cool. I'm looking forward to get out and doing some solo camping in it. And I'll uh, tell you what, I'll share some of what that solo camp is going to be like. I got a practice solo camp coming up next week. It's only going to be for three nights, but then I'm going to go out for uh, 10 nights and I'm probably going to do a 30 day solo camp come uh, October, November. So I'm looking forward to spending a lot of time in the woods and not being outdoors for a change. But instead of being in my kayak, I'm going to be out, uh, well, camping, doing some bushcraft stuff. I got a lot of bushcraft to learn. I'm looking forward to doing it. But a lot of fun stuff going on. All right, now that uh, we figured the tent out, I think I'm gonna make some uh, char cloth for that solo camp. 
uh, what's char cloth? It's like charcoal, but it's like cloth and it catches a spark really easy. It makes lighting a fire when you're in a solo camp uh, a lot simpler. I've never made char cloth before. I've never used it before, but I've watched enough YouTube where I can figure out how to make it. And basically you take uh, some cloth and you put it in a metal tin like this, stuff it in there. And it's, this is a metal container. And then I guess all I do is uh, put it in the fire. And now I just keep that in the fire for an hour or two and I take it out and all the cloth will be like really black and dark and it'll be, well, it'll be like charcoal cloth. They call it char cloth. And that'll be something I'll put in my fire kit when I take out for the solo camp. instructions well as usual I got confused with the assembly process because I don't like to read instructions I don't know it's something about it uh, I'd like to struggle I guess but I have my secret weapon which is my wife that's pretty good then I guess I make a little stick twig fire in there all right so what is this contraption it's my stove. This is what I'm going to use to cook all my food with when I'm camping by myself. I won't have the Coleman stove and I won't have the Dutch ovens. Oh, that's going to be real hard camping without the Dutch ovens. Now, I'm going to be hiking into some pretty remote places, so I'm going to uh, need to travel light. And that's why I won't have any fuel and I'll have to use stuff like this to cook my food. Uh, I'm going to try to use it right now because I've never used one of these before. And I'm going to try to uh, warm up some water, keep it simple, and uh, make some coffee. I don't know if it'll work or not, but let's see if it'll do it. I think this is an excellent fire starter. Just take a cotton ball and uh, smear it with petroleum jelly. And it just, it's awesome. It's one of the best fire starters I've ever used. This is my latest, my newest, and my first ever belt knife it's a uh i don't know mora makes it it was a hundred dollar knife it's not the most expensive knife so it really spits it out let's see if i can get something going here Yay! I did it! That's the first time I ever started a fire with anything other than matches and a lighter. That's pretty cool. Only the best. If you drink cheap coffee, you can afford to drink uh, strong coffee. That's my philosophy. I'm gonna check this water. Ooh, that's starting to feel like hot water. <laughs> Basically what I will do is just heat water for me and I'll be bringing dehydrated food out and solo camping. I think it's time to make some coffee. All right, moment of truth. Is my twig heated up coffee hot enough? Oh yeah, plenty hot. 